morning everybody welcome to the next edition of just candid chitkara university's series for entrepreneurs and with inspiring personalities the gentleman who i'm going to interview today had the audacity to share what leadership means to him and what it should mean to the country welcome sharad vivek sagar thank how you. are you thank you very much for coming all the way at surge 0.1 and what is your definition of leadership in your own way if you can share with us thank you for having me um uh, leadership since i work with middle school and high school students all across the country we like to define it in a very simple practical practical understandable and actionable way um a lot of times what we when we hear about leadership we see the optics of it uh, we see cameras flashing we see people making speeches or making big presidential waves and a lot of times our kids cannot relate to what leadership actually is in day to day life so our idea of leadership that we talk about at dexterity global and we hope to uh, inspire a lot of young people to bring this leadership in everyday life is that wherever you are whatever you're doing in whatever field if you do it with full honesty and hard work if you're extending service or if you're leading helping even one person uh, that is leadership and it is important that our kids uh, except from that prime time 9 pm uh, shows they also So begin understanding that their mother who wakes up in the morning and helps run a family perfectly or an office is a leader they need to see that one of their younger siblings who's helping somebody uh, maybe learned how to play badminton better is a leader somebody who helps somebody cross a road or a standard 8 student uh, who helps a standard 6 student with two math problems is a leader as well so initiative is what you call leadership somebody who takes an initiative a- absolutely with whatever limited capabilities you have if you're putting it to use to be of help to somebody you're a leader it's the infinite will and the ability to move ahead my question is you'd never had regular education for the first 12 years how did it feel and what was it like for you and your imagination as a child uh as a as a growing team um that's right i didn't go to school for the first 12 years of my life and uh, home schooling was a lot of fun because i didn't know what schooling was like till then it was only at the age of 12 when i saw what a school looked like i would love to have home schooling uh, i i see a lot of people in the country today who are like we wish we had a similar education but yeah i studied at home uh, my father was in state bank of india he was posted in rural branches there were no good schools around i grew up in small towns and villages of bihar um, and uh, so we just studied at home textbooks would come home and we would do our work uh, at home itself we would always read a uh, quote questions and uh, sayings and teachings of great men and women and we would read read good books and besides that i would read newspapers all the time from where eventually all the opportunity like all the news stories i was reading about young people whatever they were achieving i used to wrote, write it down and uh, that led to basically bringing all these opportunities together and starting to connect our young people with those well um i would like like to ask one next question is that how does it feel when somebody relates you with Swami Vivekananda and what is about <laughs> Sharad Vivek Sagar So the relation that I wholeheartedly accept is that uh, my father went to the Ramkrishna Mission Ashram in Patna he used to read in the library there and one day he decided that either he's going to become a sanyasi or if he has children he's going to name them after Swami Vivekananda and then we happened so <laughs> he named me uh, and my elder brother uh, Sagar comes from Ishwar Chand Vidya Sagar a uh, great indian social reformer and also one of swami vivekananda's first teachers uh, vivek comes from swami vivekananda and sharad because i was born in sharad ritu uh, so that's and the hope was that sharad who will be an ocean of wisdom hopefully powered by the ideas and ideals of swami vivekananda and ishwar chand vidya sagar and other great indians uh, so this is the meaning of my name uh, being related to vivekananda is something where i spoke at the dilaram bungalow in baroda Uh, where Swami Vivekananda had stayed before leaving for Chicago mm. and this is where the Ramkrishna Ashram in Baroda is now I spoke at the Vivekananda Hall I delivered a public speech that next day went viral and uh, within 5 days uh, Divya Bhaskar was running it and Divya Bhaskar wrote an article yeah, calling I, me I read that I read yeah. that article and uh, yeah. um was that speech uh, you know the address at the world conference of religions delivered by vivekananda did that speech inspire you 
Yes, I've always been inspired you, you by. You listen to that speak. I, I, I think we don't have audios of that. Or we don't have audios of it. Yeah. Only written, written copies, of course. And I had the great honor of delivering the uh, 125th anniversary speech of the uh, of, of the Chicago Address. Was it 11th in January? Hi- it was 11th September. September. 11th September 1893. Here, Swami Vivekananda had spoken. Uh, 11 September 2018, I delivered the memorial address as well. But this uh, 21st century Vivekananda thing that came in was Divya Bhaskar when I spoke at Dilaram Bangalore in Baroda, and that video went viral. They gave me that title. Uh, with due humility, I let them do their job. I, I do not necessarily take it. So, you're inspired by Swami Vivekananda, and what does inspire you in his guru, Prabhupada? So, that's actually a wonderful question. I think uh, all across the world, all the good people that we see who have made things happen from entrepreneurs to doctors to scientists to sports people they have had this beautiful command over their inner journey and that is something that goes neglected in tabloids and magazines and newspaper articles the inner journey that people are on a spiritual realization of who they are uh, Swami Vivekananda was deeply inspired and enriched by um, Sri Ramakrishna Dev, Ramakrishna Paramhans and Atmano Mokshartham Jagat what they talk about for the salvation of self and the larger benefit of mankind. Uh, I think that message in itself uh, is very incredibly inspiring for me and I think the entire idea about Karma Yoga, the path of un- uh, selfish ac- action or selfless action, uh, that is something that has always, always inspired me that yeah, whatever yeah, you do, yeah, yeah. you can get it done. Yes, please. Yeah, and his books, Path Bhakti Yoga and how yes. he fine tunedly segregated them and uh, and his prayer he wrote Khandan Bhavan. Khandan Bhavan, exactly. Um, you see, Vivekanand said a lot of things and he, hmm. he was anyways, you know, one of the most, you, you know, powerful, I would say leaders. Yes, he was a leader. Was, you yes. know, a youth leader of yeah. the 20th century mm-hmm. or the 19th century, I would say. But his impact is still in the 20th and it's going to be in the 21st century. He said that, I want an India where he, Students and children and youth uh, should be having muscles of iron and nerves of steel. Yes. Do you think we have right now? Is it is this going the way he imagined and visualized? So there's a good news and a bad news. Oh, oh. <laughs> bad news is that not everywhere we have that. The good news is the opportunity is open every day. Uh, till Neil Armstrong landed on moon, a night before, nobody had ever landed on moon. Till we conquered outer space, a night before we had not done that. And I think after him nobody went. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there will be some people hopefully. Uh, so the thing is that we have the opportunity every day to give our young people better role models, better local role models within the family, good examples, where they know that these uh, nerves uh, of iron and muscles of steel coat can be brought to real life where young people the character is built before a career map is built in their minds we are too busy by the time a kid is in standard three standard four we are too busy feeding the child everything that is very uh, like it it is consumed for by everyday media uh, from everyday media and then we just want our kids to be doctors and engineers with pay packages and these institutions Uh, we are too much into that if we build their character more uh, that would be very helpful so the opportunity is open every day and I think uh, India is poised to hopefully move in that direction. And being one of the youngest population in the world. Absolutely. And uh, I think the way you had struck a very fine balance with culture, your parents making you read the, you know, the Upanishads and the Indian culture, sharing more on the Indian culture. And here is a composition of a great man, you know, and uh, how was it like uh, to get an invitation from President Barack Obama to the White House? It was incredible. President Obama has been my childhood hero. Uh, I grew up in times where we only heard and read that, oh, politics is not for good people. Uh, As Indians, we've always enjoyed movies because uh, villains are beaten up by heroes, sometimes only in movies. And President Obama was a real life hero because we had this very different idea of leadership and of politics and here was a guy Harvard educated ethical honest integ- like with deep integrity author, author. audacity of hope <laughs> yes with an audacity of hope who you went read that book. yeah and who went on to 
change so much just as the election was changed but then he offered so much uh, to young people uh, on october 3 2016 uh, president obama about to leave office in three months time decided to invite 200 young leaders from all across the world yes, who who he thought would uh, lead the 21st century i had the great honor of being the only indian to be invited and uh, i must congratulate for that thank and, you and i think the whole india congratulates thank you and it was extraordinary to be in his presence um, and i don't know how uh, much time we have on that but I want to add a short uh, quick note here please at around so I spent nine hours at the White House 90 minutes with the president at around 535 536 the president comes running out of the Oval Office we were told we reached around 12 uh, noon and we were told that we'll be there for nine hours president will join us at 7 p.m. At around 535 we see the president uh, running out of the Oval Office and he sits right next to this Lego brick structure that they had made to welcome us and then within 30 seconds he was back to his Oval Office what we found out was that Pete Souza, the chief photographer, had told him that this is the time when we need you for 30 seconds to get this picture taken and then you'll be back to work. Right. His seconds were marked in that great a manner. He finished meeting with us at 8.30 and then he told us that he, he was going to join his wife because it was a marriage anniversary that day. This person, his seconds were marked so punctual, so sincere, so serious. It was just uh, oh, inspiring to be in the presence of somebody who's been your childhood hero. And you could feel it. Yeah, you can feel it. Great. Um, Two questions. One, uh, on your education. Mm -hmm. You graduated in the international relations mm -hmm. uh, stream from Tuckett's University, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. yeah. if I could say properly, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's right. And Boston, mm -hmm. the Boston area. Um, you um, got that degree and then you were offered something from Harvard. Mm -hmm. What was that and why did you reject it and why did you come back to your country? Mm -hmm. So I had founded Dexterity in 2008. For the first four years, I was a high school student and a CEO. Then I was, for the next four years, I was at Tufts pursuing a degree in international relations, my bachelor's degree. I was a college student and a CEO. And then I got an offer to do a master's at Harvard in international education policy. And I wanted to be really back in the field full time again because the summer breaks when I used to come, we used to get around 110 day long summer breaks. And I would completely be working full time in the field with our young people who we work with. And I really wanted like, a uh, Harvard education, a master's there would have been like my fifth year in Boston, a super senior year sort of a thing. So I decided to come back, continue working with our young people and then I'm young enough to go for a master's degree at a point if I feel like. So that's why I came back and I wanted to continue working with our young people. That's, um, that's amazing. You can again go back to Harvard has amazing programs yeah. throughout the year. Um, how did you feel coming to Chitkara University? It was wonderful and uh, what I loved the most and I told students about the same is uh, the entrepreneurial culture of the place. Uh, everybody, like all these young people, I, I go to a lot of schools across the country, schools and universities uh, and I see that sometimes people have to be pushed into entrepreneurship programs or e-cells and I mentioned this that I love how uh, much uh, students here love entrepreneurship in general and uh, somebody told me that they have over 380 members in the e-cell e alone. That's right. Uh, at a time when there are e-cells in the country that struggle to bring 380 like people to an event, they already have 380 members. So it, it just says uh, a lot about um, the culture here. And I love the fact that young people want to be problem solvers uh, here and they've chosen entrepreneurship as a way to do it. And no matter what they study, they want to make sure that it has a real life impact. So I, I love all of it and I wish them all the very best. How can they be the best e-cell in the country? The best e-cell in the country? Uh, by continuous striving. Uh, at the same time, here's what I want all entrepreneurs in the country and people who are ecosystem builders. And I love the fact that Surge is North India's largest congregation of ecosystem builders. We'll have to contribute in our university campuses, uh, whether we went to Chitkara or not, whether you're an alumni of an institution or not. If you're doing something somewhere in this country, it is important that you come to these university campuses You through thought leadership or through just working with students or like maybe investing in a few ideas. Uh, those things will need to happen because remember, uh, it's the same thing. The night, like the day when uh, Neil Armstrong landed on moon, till the day before nothing had happened. So you don't know when the next unicorn will come from Chitkara. You don't know why, when that first investment uh, from somebody who's like a big shot in the entrepreneurship scene would mean so much for other students. So to be the best e-cell in the country, I think just keep moving forward because those stories are not overnight successes as all That's of right. us know. It, it takes, takes years. Uh, so I think uh, the university and its ecosystem is well poised to uh, hit that at, at some point. Well, Charlotte, this has been a very 
much uh, I would say um, satisfying for me personally to talk to you and listen to you at your speech and the wind is behind your back and you're going to do great work thank and, you uh, this is another home for you whenever you would love to come to this part of the country I would love to. brings you to uh, allow us to host you for sure thank you once again from the university the founders and the students at Chitkara University it's an honor thank you so much it was indeed an honor likewise, likewise.